Welcome to the CBS Eye on Money show. It's Thursday, July 14th, which is Bastille Day. Vieux la Bastille, or something like that. Also, I've been binge watching, what's the name of the show? It's My Brilliant Friend, you know, the Elena Ferrante adaptation of her four novels, and it takes place in Naples. So there's a ton of like wild dialect that's not like real Italian. You know, it's it has a really different um, sound to the ear and they subtitle it when they're talk like so it has subtitles and it says you know like in dialect in slang it's very funny that's the region where my family was from and yeah they had their own dialect it's very very hard to decipher it anyway ciao mark how do you say what's mark in italian marco ciao marco how are you doing today? Are you feeling like you're ready to rock and roll? This is our last interview of the day. What will you do next? Make Theo lunch? Yes, I just preheated the oven. What are you making? You you said something about cod, and that jogged my uh, memory that I had some cod fillets in the freezer. So I'm going to throw a fillet in the oven for him. Oh my God, what a what a lunch you're making! I I'm going to come down there and just uh, hang out with you guys. Okay, this is not a cooking show. This is the program that tries to help you make better financial decisions. Maybe even, uh, maybe it doesn't have to be better, just maybe different, or maybe you just want a little opinion about what's going on in your financial life. If that's the case, just go to jillonmoney.com, click the Contact Us button. Don't forget to let us know if you will join us on the air. That is what Janelle did. She is on the line from the Midwest. Hello, Janelle. What can we do for you today? Hi, I wanted to call and get your and Mark's opinions because my husband and I just paid off his medical school loans and we have a lot of excess cash flow that we would like to save most of it and have some deferred spending for some of it for bigger things later. But um, we were pitched by our financial advisor that we should get an annuity since we can no longer do a backdoor Roth contribution. Why can't you do a backdoor Roth? Well, he didn't think it was going to go through, you know, with the with the voting, but it did. So we could still technically do that, right, for this year. But he's seeing that it's going to go down, you know, down the line, thinks it's going to be on the chopping block. Could be. So, but, you know, they're not going to be, they're not voting for anything anyway. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. You are how old? I'm 33. How old is doctor husband? 35. Excellent. What kind of doctor? He's um, internal med primary care. That doesn't sound like a big high earning kind of doctor. So what is he? It's usually not. It's usually not, but we're in um, a small town. So that kind of helps his income be higher. He makes about 280. Plus he gets some productivity bonuses. Productivity bonuses. Spend mm-hmm. three minutes left less with Mark Talercio yeah. and we'll pay you more. <laughs> wow. Okay. And do you work? I do. What do you I, I work part time. I earn about 30 a year. And do you have some kids? No kids? Where are you in the process? We have one who's 20 months old. We're considering one more, but that would absolutely be it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that, Mark? That would absolutely be it. Okay. (laughs) Plus an option to buy one more. Okay. Got it. Let me just go back to the income for a second because I kind of messed up. I didn't keep going with that. Um, On his $280,000 with productivity bonuses, what kind of retirement plan does he have? He has a 401k and he does have the option for the 403 B. We don't, you know, I've been asking him to show me the paperwork and see if he has a Roth option because right now it's traditional. Okay. How much money did you guys, um, do you have saved in retirement in his 401k right now? Probably about 180. Okay. And he's maxing it, right? He's putting maxing it. Yeah. And he could also put money in a 403b. For your $30,000, are you putting money into retirement or are you using um, an IRA or a Roth IRA for you? I am putting in 15% of my income into my 457. And I'm also doing a Roth. I've been doing a Roth every year for a few years. I have about 20,000 in it. How much is in the 457 plan? About 40. Great. Uh, Brokerage account? We do have a brokerage Um, it's at about 30,000 right now. 
Um, how about just safe money in the bank? We have about six months in an emergency fund. We would like to increase it a little bit. But yeah, we have six months right now. Do you have any money saved for the 20 month old who's clearly going to be a scholar athlete and probably not need you to save for college because you can tell at 20 months? Right. Um, yes, we have a 529 set up for him. We're planning to pay for a portion of undergraduate school, but probably beyond that, we would have to look at getting loans or something like that. My husband feels very strongly that he needs to have skin in the game for his education. So, All right. I've heard this from many, many parents. That's fine. Um, how much money is in the 529 plan? Right now he has about 4000 and are you making contributions on a regular basis or just dumping money in based on your productivity bonuses? Um, no, we every month we make a contribution to his 529. And then the productivity, really, we dumped that into my husband's student loan debt. OK, great. Now, so we've got the uh, the 401k with a 403b option. We got your 457 plus your Roth. You've got the 529. You've got a brokerage account. You've got an emergency reserve fund. Tell us about your housing. Do you um, own or do you rent? Yes, we own. Um, we've been in our home for a few years. We just refinanced um, in 2020. Oh, what? Tell yes. me about the refi. How much is the mortgage now? Well, the mortgage is at 333 with a 2.8 interest rate. But we do have PMI, which I know is probably odd because we were in a physician mortgage, which was like 5%. Yep. And we had put zero down. Yep. So when we refied, we ended up with PMI, which cost us $50 a month. So the math still, even though we have that PMI, it still doesn't really make sense to, you know, the payoff right now is like twenty four thousand. What's really that house sense. worth? It's worth like four ten. Okay. So we're getting close. Is there anything else going on in your financial life that we should know about in terms of the assets and liabilities? Well, I am going to be resigning from my position in a couple of months, and I'm I have a private practice, so I'm going to be doing that as my full full thing now. So. It's going to be less income from me, but we, you know, my income is, you know, nothing compared to my husband's. So I'm going to just have some more flexibility in order to help um, with our son and, and all that, but I'll still be working. So that's going to change, but I'm not too concerned about that. We have some goals in terms of, we live very comfortably, but there are some things that we have not done because of the student loan debt. We don't have like furniture. We have my grandparents' <laughs> furniture. We literally have these two ugly gold sofas that were my grandparents. And so the, just things like that. And like, we're going to need a bigger car if we have a, another child and right. that kind of thing. But other than that, not really. I mean, any those other, are- Is there any, so you paid off the medical school loans. Any other debt besides the mortgage? No. Okay, great. What do you think your free cash flow is right now in terms of, you know, just on the 280? Forget about your 30, right? I mean, you'll make some money, but like, do you, can you live fine on this 280? Oh, yeah. Okay. For sure. Do you think you have extra money every month to sock away? Yes. Once you've like paid off this debt, it's time to like now live a little. So what do we have to do to sock away enough money? Like how much are you saving? What do you think you have extra every month? Again, we're presuming, well, maybe we'll just do it while you're still working. With your 30 grand, how much can you sock away every month? We have 4,000 extra each month. That's and how then, much we were paying for his loans every month. Okay. So you've got this free cash flow. You're just going to pop it into your, I don't know, like your emergency reserve slash house fund. I just want to ask you a bit about this financial advisor. So this financial advisor is managing your Roths and your brokerage account? Yes. How much do you pay for that? It's right at 1%. Like, what do you get for that? Like, do Honestly, you just get money management or do you get like real financial planning? We really don't get a lot. And we've been considering breaking up with him. He has set us up with, you know, all of our life insurance, disability policies, got us hooked up with an estate planning attorney, all that kind of thing, which was great. 
but mostly just money management. He's never shown us like, you know, I hear people call in and say they've seen their retirement simulated. That's we've never had that. So I feel like he doesn't do a whole lot. Okay. Tell me about the life insurance policies. Are they term life insurance? Yes. We okay. both have term life insurance. Uh, how much is that? For me, it's 500 And for my husband, we just redid his last year and I was trying to think. It was $2 million. I think we went a little bit higher. Okay. Did he also sell you the 529 plan or, or are you doing that directly? No, I am. I am doing that. Okay. I put good. that in an index fund. Perfect. Uh, so yeah. you're going to do the same exact thing with your brokerage account and your, you know, and the Roths and everything. Like you can do this yourself. Essentially, you paid him a little bit of a higher fee for the advice that he gave you, which was life insurance and the estate. He did all that. Like, like I don't want you to feel bad about it. He was compensated, and now you don't need him anymore. Like you just worked yourself out of a job. And it's not like the worst thing in the world. That happens all the time. Where do your are your plans held? In Fidelity or Vanguard? Any place like that where you are comfortable with a platform already? So he has everything at TD Ameritrade. And I honestly don't find that to be super user-friendly. Like for me as a, you know, just a lay person. Yeah. But I don't, you know, and I was wondering, can I even use TD Ameritrade if I'm not a professional or is that not? Yeah. No, you can. But if you don't like it, then don't do it. There's certainly very easily um, easy and intuitive platforms, either at Fidelity or at T. Rowe Price or at Schwab or at Vanguard and just do it that way. What else is so we've got this whole we still have the question of what happens to the free cash flow. We're going to do we're going to continue doing the backdoor Roths. But what else? This That's not, you know, four grand a month is a lot of money. So we're saving beef up the emergency reserve, save money for the get rid of Nana's furniture. What else do they should they do? How much are you currently putting into the 529s each month? We put in 300 a month. I would bump that up. I would say make it six, six or seven. Uh, and that still leaves you with a lot of money. I would put the new job. Are you going to be, how's that going to be set up? Are you going to be like the loan employee? I mean, you could certainly set up a retirement plan if you wanted. Yes, I will be. It's, it's just me. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I've been doing this kind of as my side thing for a few years and I just take private pay and that's been working really well. We're able to kind of get some tax benefits, I would think from me being a sole proprietor, um, which is helpful. So yeah, I thought about that too. I don't know what kind of individual retirement would be best. Well, I mean, it kind of depends on how much money you're making, but there's so much available to you. So what do you project you'll be able to earn being self-employed? I could earn the same, if not more than what I'm currently earning, still working part-time. Oh my God, that's awesome. So yeah. Mark, do you want to just do, you want to do a solo 401k or do you want to do a SEP? Oh, I would do a solo. I mean, maybe, maybe give it a few months and see how things are going. But I think eventually I would do a solo and I, I would do a, a Roth version of a solo. But I would just say one thing about the solo 401k is that if for some reason you think you're going to have employees at, at any point in the future, that's not the best plan for you. But if it is, if you're not, if you're just alone and that's it, then this is perfect. It'll allow you to put a lot of money away and you don't have no obligation to do anything. Like you don't have to put a certain amount of money away. Okay, perfect. Okay. And should my husband be using a Roth for his 401k if he has the option? Mark, they're making whatever, three something. And that means that they are uh, top bracket of 24%. Yay or nay? Youngins in their 30s, yay all the way. Yeah, Roth all the way. So rock and roll on that. I think that's, I agree. You know, we don't really have an idea about whether there's a second child or not, but I like the concept of putting money into the 529. We know that your husband's like big on skin in the game thing. So, you know, if you put a thousand bucks a month away, if you have a second child, you can always, you know, revamp this, but you're in a wonderful situation. The weirdest thing that I have noticed is that often people who have big outstanding debts can become phenomenal savers because you're, like, you're used to that money going out. So before you spend it all on furniture, I just want to be clear that you are entitled to spend the money or you should have fun. But when you get your kind of a better sense of like really what 
the the needs are and you get that done and then we get rid of your PMI and all that like let's get cranking because the one rotten part about all those years of training as a physician is that you know you really have like a 10 12 year lag on getting your retirement savings so now he's making a lot of money you'll be making a bunch of money on your own you'll manage this process now it's time to kick some butt and get money to work for you okay and the original question, annuity, no way. Anything any, anything left over, use a brokerage account. Exactly. Okay. The annuity question, what a drag that that per- – I mean, it just tells you that that was a person who was primed to fire, forgetting about the bad advice around the backdoor Roth, but the fact that, oh, yeah, use an annuity, eh. You know, when we were looking at it, and of course, they're using this like flow chart thing and showing us everything – For our brokerage account, he was showing us that the amount we would pay in taxes would be significantly more than how much we'd be taxed for our annuity. Yeah, except he probably forgot one last thing that was during your accumulation phase without any regard for what happens when you take the money out of the annuity, which is instead of paying capital gains taxes you are then converting all of the money that accumulates into ordinary income. It's a bad, bad bet. I I hear you because I said to my husband, I think I'm done with him and he agrees. So that just confirms that for us. All right, Janelle, anything else? One last thing, and I think I already know the answer because it has to do with Roth money. But when I leave my employer, shall I roll my 457 into a traditional and convert all that to Roth then? I'm assuming yes. Yes. Okay. Mark, Perfect. do you want to give your yes so you have it? It's like 40 grand-ish? Yes. Yeah I, uh, yeah, I would probably just do it and get rid of it now, yeah. I mean, you have you have the cash flow to pay the tax. All right, let's do it. Neat, tidy consolidation. Marie Kondo for Janelle in the Midwest. Thank you so much for joining us today. Keep us in touch. Let us know about baby number two. All right. If you, like Janelle, have just paid off a big debt and you would like the opportunity to do something different with that debt, you want to figure out what to do with all that extra cash, let us know. Just go to jillonmoney.com, click the Contact Us button, and let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air. Mark does everything else. You can, of course, follow Eye on Money wherever you find your favorite podcast. Also, check out our sister broadcast. It's called Jill on Money. While you're on the website, sign up for the free weekly newsletter. And we ask very kindly, if you wouldn't mind leaving us a rating and review, it really does help us out. We drop our episodes here at the Eye on Money show every Tuesday and Thursday. We are distributed by CBS. Mark Talercio is our co-host and the executive producer. And we encourage you to please put your hands metaphorically on someone's back. It will make that person feel better and it will surely make you feel better. Thank you very much for listening. Curiosity, compassion, community. We'll talk to you next week. 